It's been a while since I've managed to do any Apple products and recently Apple have just announced the new iPad Pro so that's exactly what I have here in front of me. Hey everyone my name's Monty and welcome to Inside Wire. We have the iPad Pro 13 inch model, the Magic Keyboard and the new Apple Pencil and in this video we're going to take a look at it. First we start off with the unboxing which is always the fun part so let's rip off this. And you can see already how thin this new iPad is. It's just 5.1 millimeters. And if I pick this up, this is incredibly thin. Uh, it almost feels like I'm ready to bend this. And I think Jerry rig everything, obviously he does stuff like this. So he's gone ahead and tested the bend test on this. But this is my first initial thoughts is this is really light and it's very thin compared to my previous iPad Pro. Also inside the box, you get yourself a nice black that makes a change from the white one. You get yourself a nice black USB-C to USB-C cable. And that is a Thunderbolt port on here. So you can go ahead and use that to transfer your data. Or actually what we're going to do later is connect it to a screen back there and see what that looks like. And we have the standard or the additional stuff we expect to see within the Apple boxes. And the color we have here is the space gray. So you can take a look at that. And this also comes in silver as well. So you have two different options that you can choose from and the sizes range from 256 all the way up to two terabytes. Now there is a nano glass texture that you can get on these but unfortunately I didn't fancy spending extra hundred quid to get the nano texture on there plus the additional and it only comes in the one or two terabyte model. So, Let's take a look at the Apple Pencil then. So this is next so this is Apple's latest update. Now I've seen some really good things on this already so looking forward to getting this tested and how well this works. Uh, it looks fairly similar to the original Apple Pencil except there are some additional features in here which we'll cover shortly. And finally, we have the new Magic Keyboard for the 13 inch iPad Pro. This is the Space Gray version and is very similar to the previous model. Now there is a very small difference in size between this and the previous model and I have a full comparison video coming where I compare the old and the new iPad Pros. So if you wanna watch that, let me know what you wanna see down in the comments and also hit that subscribe button too. So we know this sits straight on here like this and it connects straight in and we have no issues with that. On the side, we have the USB pass-through, right? We have a USB-C cable that you can go ahead and charge this. And some of the new functionality that you can see just at the top here, if I bend this back a little bit, we have the function buttons up here, which wasn't on the previous version. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get the iPad set up and configured and make sure it's charged and then we'll come back and take a closer look. So let's start with the iPad itself. So let's break this down a little bit further and see what's new. So we have now a single 12 megapixel camera on the back, which can do video recording and it does ProRes recording as well, up to 60 frames per second if you pop in an external SSD. We have the camera now on the top instead of the side. So previously it did work in landscape mode, but I found when I was using it, I've got my hands here holding it like so, and it would cover the camera, but now, the camera's at the top, the face ID is no issues at all and it works perfectly fine every time. And if we talk about the internals, this has the eight core M4 chip inside. And if you go to the one terabyte version, there's an option to buy the 10 core version. That one also comes with 16 gig of RAM and this one has eight gig. We have the Thunderbolt port at the bottom and we have four built-in speakers along with four studio mics. So we're gonna put the studio mic to the test shortly and see how nice this sounds on here. And finally, we look at the connectivity within the iPad. So it has Wi-Fi 6E built into it and Bluetooth 5.3. Again, this is similar to the old iPad version. So there's no improvement there. If we have a little look at the keyboard itself, we have the floating design. We have the function keys that I mentioned earlier at the top and the full keyboard on here as well. We have the trackpad on here, which has the feedback on it. And we have pass through charging on the side through these little ports that connect up to your iPad. The new Apple Pencil that's come out now has a squeeze function and a tap and double tap. So let's take a quick look at how that works. So if we pop this to the side right here. So at the moment you can see I can just squiggle along here. And if I go ahead, I can now squeeze the pencil just like so and bring up the eraser and we can go ahead and erase that. And then we can squeeze it again to bring the menu back up and we can scroll across and we can see the whole range of different pencils and pens and fountain pens and highlighters that we can use. The one thing that really impressed me is the hover function. So you can actually see that on here. I'm hoping you can see this close enough, but if I pop this down here, you can see the pen appear on here. 
and you can go ahead and rotate that and you can see that now turning. So if I wanted to go that way, I could do. And if I wanted to go again that way, we could do. And if we keep it the same way, you can see the fountain pen works in the direction that you hold it and works like it is a real fountain pen. So I've gone ahead and connected this to an external display just to show you the capabilities of this. Now, this was there on the original iPad as well on the previous version, but it's something I wanted to test out on this with the new iPad Pro and Final Cut Pro. So you can see here, this is just a demo project that I've got from here. So you can see that it works perfectly fine. The scrolling works, you have the screen and you can flick very easily between the iPad so we can move to the iPad if we want, or we can go ahead and move it back to the main display. So you have a couple of different choices. Now, if you wanna go ahead and export this, let's just see how quick it takes to export. So if we go ahead and export the video, we want video audio, we want the high quality, we have the Apple ProRes and HD version, so we go ahead and export that. And this is, let's how long, look how long this clip is. This clip's probably about 40 to 50 seconds and you can literally see how quick that is exporting. So in terms of the speed, I will do this in the comparison video when I compare this against the old iPad to see how well it works. And we just wanna save the video and there we go. So now if I go back into my iPad and here is the video exported, you can see I have this at full brightness and you can see the vibrancy of the colors. This is the 1600 nits HDR screen kicking in. And again, I'll do this in a comparison video where I compare the old and new. And if there is anything else you wanna see something specifically, again, let me know down in the comments below. Another quick test for you is the studio mics that are built into this. So I'm not using any other external mics. I'm literally just recording straight on the iPad. So I wanna hear how well this actually sounds. As I mentioned, there's a few upgrades in terms of the camera. So if we jump in, we have the new side camera just here like so. So if I flip this around, you can see I'm pointing that directly back at you, but we have the camera now that's at the top instead of the side. So this was really good in that sense. And you can see from here, if I just show you like so, you can see we can record, it's a HD camera at the front, so we can only do 1080p at 60 frames per second, but that's in terms of the video. And if we have a look at the photo as well, we have the photo option, so we can go ahead and take those. And we have a portrait option as well. So should you wanna take out a picture that can blur the background, then we have that functionality as well. So flipping the camera back to the other side, we can go ahead and we have a single camera now that sits at the back just here. It's not a dual camera anymore, so you have the one times and the two times option. You no longer have the ultra wide option for the iPad Pro. So within here, we can go ahead, and as I mentioned, you can do ProRes footage in here as well. So we have the uh, 4K version at 60 frames per second, that's the standard recording. And if you pop in a SSD on the side, you can go ahead and do a ProRes version. So here's a little pano video of the garden, just so you can see what that looks like in terms of the 4K 60 frames per second video. I wanna show you one clip on YouTube just right here. This is a 4K HDR footage video that you can see playing from the YouTube app. And I wanna show you how clear and crystal the color is and how well it looks and what that looks like on here. So the color is unmatched. The screen you can see is really nice, giving you that extra viewing pleasure that you're gonna want when you're using this iPad. So overall, what do I think of this iPad? Is it worth the upgrade? Well, for this, I need to see what it looks like against the previous iPad. In terms of just looking at the specification, yes, it's a little bit faster, yes, it's a little bit brighter, and it has a slight upgrade in the display, but is it warranting the 1200 pound upgrade that it would cost you? If I was buying this for the first time, yes, there are a lot of use cases now. This could easily replace those lower end MacBook Pros. With Final Cut Pro on there, you can edit straight from here, you can record on here, and there's one other feature which I'm hopefully gonna be testing over the week, which is the multicam output straight from the iPad Pro. So you can use your iPhones to record and the multicam view is straight on here. In terms of the pencil, again, if you have an existing pencil, is it really worth the upgrade? Well, it depends on, again, your use case. If you have the full artistic and you use it quite heavily and you're gonna use the pinch functionality, then I would say this is worth the upgrade. 
Otherwise, stick with your USB-C one and it will do what you want it to do. If you take notes, then it's really not worth the upgrade on this. And finally, the keyboard case. Now, there are hundreds of third-party options out there and I think there'll be more to come over the coming weeks. There'll be loads available already on Amazon. Now, I don't have a range of them to test, but from what I've seen on here, it doesn't feel like much of an upgrade from the previous version other than the additional keys at the top here and a backlit keyboard. So again, you have to justify whether you want that upgrade or not. For me, if I were again buying this brand new, it would be perfectly fine. I'd be happy to buy this keyboard. But if you have an existing one, is it worth the upgrade? Well, you need to buy a new iPad to start with. But going from the previous version, there doesn't feel like there's too much of the upgrade itself. Well, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Again, remember to hit the like and subscribe and do leave me a comment down below what your thoughts are on the new iPad itself. For now, this is Inside Wire and I'll see you in the next one.